everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you part 3 of our 5 part series of haunts and legends from every state. Author Edith Wharton's estate, known as The Mount, is not only beautiful but haunted as well. Witnesses have reported noises such as floorboards creaking and doors slamming, thought to be caused by the spirits of former employees of the estate. Edith herself may haunt the place as the spirit of a woman has been seen in her bathroom. Maybe she got the inspiration for the ghosts that sometimes appeared in her stories from the spirits lingering there. Giles Corey was famously pressed to death as larger and larger rocks were stacked on his chest, all in the effort of the courts to elicit a confession of witchcraft during the Salem Witch Trials. But Giles remained true to himself and never gave them the confession they desired. Instead, with his dying breath, he cursed the town of Salem. Since his death, it's said that his spirit will appear at the cemetery just before tragedy strikes. Kinda like a colonial era Mothman. The huge Detroit Masonic Temple is a hot spot for paranormal activity, and with all the square footage available, one can only imagine how many spirits reside within its walls. Guests have reported hearing doors slamming, seeing shadows, and feeling unnaturally cold spots all over the place. The spirit of George Mason, who committed suicide after his wife left him because he went bankrupt funding the project, can eerily be seen climbing the stairs that lead to the roof, the very place he took his own life. The historic Holly Hotel has survived two fires that happened exactly 65 years apart, leading some people to think that supernatural forces may be at work. Some people who stayed there report smelling cigar smoke when no one's around, and this has led many to the conclusion that the spirit of one of the original owners is around. The spirit of Nora Kane also makes her presence known to visitors. First, you'll notice the sweet scent of her perfume, then hear the faint sounds of ghostly humming, or if she's in the mood, singing as well. People say the beautiful Griggs Mansion is haunted by seven spirits. Allegedly, a former maid was lonely and depressed, and ended up hanging herself there one day while the family was away, and her spirit has stayed ever since. Along with other usual paranormal activity, the ghost of a man wearing a top hat has been reported as well. The Wendigo is a horrid creature from Native American lore whose name means an evil spirit that devours mankind. They believed that when a human resorted to cannibalism, as they sometimes were forced to do to survive the long harsh winters in the north, that they then would be transformed into the evil creature. The insatiable cannibalistic beast is said to stand over 15 feet tall and appear horribly gaunt with glowing eyes, long fangs, matted hair, and deathly gray skin, and emit the stench of decay. The terrifying creature endlessly roams the upper portion of Minnesota looking for his next victim. Please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you won't miss a thing. Thank you for your support. And now back to the show. King's Tavern has been around for centuries and has seen a lot of shady stuff going down in its day. Proof was given to some of the legends when renovation work was underway. Three mummified bodies were found bricked into the chimneys, along with a dagger likely used in the murders. One of the bodies was believed to be the mistress of a former owner, and she's not shy about making her presence known. People see shadowy figures, and the unlit fireplace emits heat. Maybe something she learned to do while she was locked inside. Some say legendary blues musician Robert Johnson made a deal with the devil at a crossroads in Mississippi. Little is known about Johnson in life, but his meteoric rise to stardom made people wonder, and without hard evidence, they looked to his music, which often spoke about his deals with the devil, for answers. Missouri's governor's mansion is said to be haunted by the spirit of a former governor's nine-year-old daughter who passed away from an illness back in the day, and probably a few others to boot. Objects move on their own, disembodied whispers are heard, and laughter moves throughout the halls. One time, a construction worker was working up in the attic, and the little girl must have been a fan. 
He said she was there the whole day, and she must have seemed really real because when he found out there wasn't actually a child that lived there, he never came back. Outside of St. Louis, there's an old dirt road the locals call Zombie Road. According to legend, the road used to be well-traveled, but by the 50s it had turned into a lover's lane of sorts. So, what goes better with heavily wooded, secluded dark roads and young love? than a psychotic serial killer and a handful of ghosts who met their doom here. Of course, stories started spreading amongst the local teenagers, and the legend was born. The Daily Mansion staff has been reporting paranormal occurrences for years. Mrs. Daily Spirit has been seen walking the halls. One particular painting repeatedly falls off the walls after being rehung time and time again and cigar smoke can often be smelled near Mr. Daly's office. The Old Montana Territorial Prison has been around since 1871 and housed prisoners all the way up until 1979. In no time at all, the prison became way overcrowded and starvation, violence, murder, and suicide were commonplace. Just as gruff and nasty in death as they were in life, the spirits here like to touch, push, and sometimes aggressively charge people. Fall Cemetery has its fair share of angry ghosts. One of the spirits that has often been reported is that of a tall, burly man who kicks over gravestones for fun. Even worse is the ghost of a large, intimidating man who people have said left cuts and welts on them. Sometimes ghostly mists appear in the cemetery, causing people to lose their way. But on a lighter note, the spirit of Mary Mumford seems to be less threatening and finds great pleasure in tugging on people's clothes. Afterward, they often hear the sounds of faint laughter. McKay Mansion, now a museum, is haunted by the spirit of a little girl in a white dress that's been seen in many rooms, even by Johnny Depp when he stayed in an upstairs room while shooting a movie. And the kitchen is home to a ghostly colonel who enjoys just sitting there. If you're out in Nevada and you need a place to stay, Goldfield Hotel might not be a bad choice, but I wouldn't stay in room 109 if I was you. According to legend, a long time ago, one of the former owners got a prostitute named Elizabeth pregnant. To protect his reputation, because God forbid someone think ill of him, he decided the best course of action was to chain Elizabeth to the radiator in that very room. As soon as the baby was born, he heartlessly tossed it down an empty mine shaft in the basement. And as for Elizabeth, let's just say she didn't survive. The John Paul Jones House was the boarding house where the American Revolutionary War hero stayed from 1781 to 1782. Some unlucky people have seen cabinets fly open, and John Paul Jones himself still seems to enjoy hanging out in his former room. A pale female apparition has been spotted looking out the window, and another woman's spirit was seen standing outside looking into the window. Seeing as he was such a famous war hero, it seems the ladies could never get enough of him. Off the coast of New Hampshire are the Isles of Shoals, where you'll find Smutty Nose Island. This oddly named island was the site of a grisly axe murder of two women over a century ago, and visitors say their frantic ghostly screams can still be heard. Even though this happened a long time ago, legends persist that the axe murderer and a few dead pirates, because why not, decided to spend their eternity here. The Southern Mansion was once a summer country estate that is rumored to be haunted by more than a few spirits. The kitchen staff says that there is an elderly female spirit that helps in the kitchen and the happy laughing voice of a female is heard rattling around, which don't sound too bad. But on the other hand, some rooms seem to emit a sense of dread and anxiety. As with many hauntings and legends, this one begins with people tearing up land that was sacred to Native Americans. Although a Delaware Indian chief warned them that it wasn't a good idea, they decided to build Route 55 anyway. During the construction, road crews suffered terrible tragedies. Some died at the site, and others had loved ones die in gruesome car wrecks. And someone even got crushed under an asphalt machine. Seems like maybe they should have listened to the chief. In closing, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. 
Stay tuned for part four, coming soon. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget the podcast. Bye!